suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not, itself is not puffed up. Not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things. In the name of the light of God that never fails, I invoke the flame of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood. O Holy Spirit, manifest now out of the heart of the Lord of the world, Gautama Buddha, out of the heart of Sanat Kumara, Lord Maitreya, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Saint Germain. I invoke the flame of the immaculate conception of the Holy Virgin, I call forth the immaculate concept for each one. I call for the lowering into position over each life stream of the mighty electronic presence of each one's I am that I am. I invoke the descent of the Holy Spirit. I call for the avatars now to come forth east and west to reinforce in these disciples of the brotherhood the mighty action of the sacred fire. I call for the light of love from our heart to expand, for the flaming force field of the enlightened one to manifest here. I call for the multiplication of the action of love as the flame of beloved Samuel and charity. I call for the mighty love ray from the heart of Zarathustra. I call unto the Lord God Almighty. I call for the mighty Holy Spirit Increase, intensify, march, O Han, O legions of light, let God's will be done. In the name of the Father, the Mother, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.
mighty light, mighty light descending. O oh, my beloved, we are come into the very midst of life, bearing the sacred gift of love. It is the love of the Lord of the world for thy soul, for thy heart, for thy gentle becomingness. We are bearers of infinite love, of a cosmos, and we would take this hour with you to extol the light and love of the heart of Gautama Buddha. Won't you be seated? Most blessed ones, he cometh, and his servants, as the bodhisattvas, as the initiates of the buddhic light, amplifying the mother flame, are in attendance, and they carry the train of the Lord of the world, which sweeps around the whole earth, for it is a manifestation of his infinite patience with the children of God who have gone astray upon this planetary home. Infinite patience. Thus, the Lord of the world embraces all in his heart and he is the reflection of Sanat Kumara and the Holy Kumaras and the light of far off worlds. Now this love is supreme power and this love is the fullness of all that God is, all attributes, all consciousness, all will. The flame of love of the heart of Gautama is therefore the very thrust of challenge to all those who have departed from the center of God's love. It is the positioning of the one who determined to become the Buddha in the very heart of the creative fire. Blessed hearts, this presence of love incites the greatest rebellion, the greatest hatred, and the creation of hatred that is anywhere manifest midst the fallen ones, because love is the highest attribute of God, because perfect love can never be defiled or penetrated or destroyed or perverted. This love remains the ultimate challenger of the fallen ones and the ultimate destroyer of their infamy in the person of the Holy Spirit. Thus, of all initiates and adepts who have risen from this planetary system under the Lord Sanat Kumara, it is Gautama Buddha who holds the preeminence of the love fire, and therefore he is the one at the point of the nexus of all light, against which the hordes of hell and the anti-light direct their opposition. Every devotee of the Buddha and of the cosmic Christ and of the avatars whose issue 
streams forth through his heart must also face this energy that opposes the perfect peace of perfect love. We come then, defenders of love, and leaders of the archangels and the many angelic bands serving with us in the very victorious flame of divine love. We come fully aware that the maintenance of love day by day involves a striving, an ultimate striving, a compelling of the soul to strive to manifest the greatest essence of the interior light, even the nectar of the Lord Buddha. It is the summoning of forces, cosmic forces within and inherent in thine own being. It is the summoning of will to bring forth that skill, that perfection, that perfect enterprise that becomes not only the handiwork of God, but the instrumentation of highest manifestation of God in the earth. Let me tell you something about perfect love. It is not only selflessness, but it is the assertion of the great God self with such an all-consuming fiery furnace of manifestation as to consume all unlike love. Now you know that irritation and dislike and hatred and disdain is unlike love. And you know that misuses of the sacred fire and lust and sensuality and human possessiveness and all these things have been pointed out as the antithesis of love. You are aware of human rebellion and disobedience as the sign of anti-love and anti-Christ. You are aware of ingratitude and an absence of appreciation for the sacrifices made by Gautama Buddha and other avatars as also being anti-love. You are aware of the blindness which is the cutting off of the all-seeing eye of God, the absence of vision that is also the antithesis of love. All of these things you know. But we in this year and in this cycle turning would bring to you the appreciation of the ruby ray of love, uh, of the unfolding rose of the heart, and of the light descending that demands manifestation within you. This love of which we would speak is the love of excellence. So you have inscribed the word of Casimir Poseidon, learn to love to do well and you shall. We speak of that love then that descends and is perforce the active principle that is able to crystallize the ideations of the mind of God, the desires of God into action, action that is an intense release of the sacred fire of the heart, action that becomes the opportunity to endow matter and material creation with the Holy Spirit. It is the love of perfecting the art, the skill, the profession, the study. It is the love to do all things well because God is thereby glorified. It is the love that desires to be in the right vibration now and always 
because of the great sacrifices made by the avatars who have gone before and of the intense plight of humanity in their needs. It is a love of excellence and a love of the very process of striving to perform with excellence. It is love of the sacred labor. It is love to be engaged in the work of the ages. It is a love that says, all things I do, I will do them according to the law of perfection. I will do them to manifest this perfection of Christ and his will of which God has given to me the capability and the perseverance. This is a love that is sharpening the tools of the mind, that is preparing the heart, that fasts and prays, not in order to display spirituality, but for a cosmic purpose to be the vessel of the Lord. It is a love that lives in the sense of God's holiness. It is a love that does not forget the person of Mother Mary or the holy angels or the vastness of the work at hand or of all that hangs upon this victory. It is the love of souls about to be lost but who will not be lost because you press on and summon again and again the necessary energy and light and determination to finish that which has been begun. My angels now open the book of life for you each one in private consultation with your Christ self, with your soul, and with your etheric memory that you might observe written upon this book the unfinished tasks, the beginnings that have had no endings, only frayed ends of non-accomplishment, only a looking back to what might have been and even a glorying in the very fantasy of the idea itself with a non-realization that the idea is totally ineffective for good because it has been stillborn. Therefore, beloved hearts, we show you only those spirals begun which had they been completed by you would have been a blow for the Lord and the striking of the iron while it was hot those beginnings which could have resulted in small and greater victories in past ages which could have made the difference in past civilizations and even the nexus of the now where we are gathered together to consider in this hour what is the state of planet earth at the turning of the year beloved hearts as you look upon the long lists, and they are indeed long, it is not our intent that you should become weary, but only that you should realize that you are here because of unfinished business, unfinished because of the absence of perfect love in your life a love of excellence that will see through to the moment when that which is brought forth becomes nourishment for the babes in Christ. Not until the precipitation in the spoon and the feeding in the mouth of the child and the assimilation of the one to whom the gift was intended is the spiral complete. All noble efforts have behind them a cause to glorify God, to elevate humanity and thereby elevate his flame within the souls who are tied to Gautama Buddha. Understand then 
that the path of excellence is being lost in the world at a most rapid pace in the trades in the arts in merchandising and manufacturing the profit motive has replaced the love of excellence and even service for the love of humanity there are those who will manufacture goods unnecessary to life whose very manufacture will cause byproducts pollutants chemical wastes dangerous from the manufacture of plastics and other substances which are not being disposed of correctly there is no love motive therefore but only greed only the giant octopus of the money beast taking unto itself more and more of the lifeblood of the people blessed hearts the free enterprise system the ability to enter in to competition and to bring forth the highest work has been destroyed by the monopolies of the fallen ones by their interference with government controls against these monopolies therefore we see that the flow of love the flow of the holy spirit is stopped on one hand by the human consciousness of greed itself which then becomes vulnerable to the manipulation of the fallen ones from without we see then that the entire intent of god of human interaction through the holy spirit is being worn away and the abuse of that light of the holy spirit is causing not only a depression of the chakras but a depression of the money system and the out of alignment of the abundant life and of the souls of god with that life it is this misuse of love in this single quality of excellence in action excellence in precipitation highest striving for the highest good that we would call to your attention for as we serve on the third ray as the archangel and the archaea thereof we must consider that which is stopping the flow of love and therefore causing death and decay from this angle of the misuse of the third ray you have been instructed by gabriel concerning the causes of disease in the mental and feeling worlds of mankind well beloved hearts it is the absence of love and of perfect striving it is entering in to the rituals of satanic ones and their mechanization man that closes off the flow of love into the world this absence of love is the upsetting of all things of the culture of the mother of education of the sanity of souls and especially of the correct use of the laws of supply and demand when people have thrust upon them goods that are inferior or goods that cater to the flattery of the body or of the ego then the very substance of the holy spirit the energy of creation is being totally misapplied when you consider then that people no longer consider in many areas of life that their work is indeed a service to one another but rather only see at the end of the day what their pay will be and how they can play you can well understand that in order for society to survive it turns to the welfare state where government does everything for the people they do less and less therefore there is no longer the challenge of the striving of self-givingness and the quality of the excellence of love the quality of striving is that each one in his own soul in his own sacred right might arrive at that perfect self-givingness and the perfect self-givingness is the giving of one's own creation upon the altar of humanity to bring the happiness of god the joy of god the peace of god the freedom of god the mastery and control of the environment of god
I repeat then of God, for many perform these works for human happiness, for human peace, for human freedom, for human comfortability, and all these things then are minus the state of grace, the vibration and the light of grace that always descends from the Lord Jesus Christ and from your own Christ self as the result of this perfect self-givingness. Working hard has gone out of style in many quarters, and therefore where there is striving among the chilas and sacrificial giving of life in service, it comes under condemnation and criticism and the fallen ones who sit in the seat of the scornful set themselves up as judges as to whether or not it is lawful for the children of the light to serve. You have heard of the sheer idiocy of the fallen ones in Austria who cut off the service of the Vienna Boys Choir because it violated child labor laws. Blessed hearts, this was the effective instrument of the Christ light of pure love to stream through their hearts, to give them a goal of striving and discipline and service, and to offer unto those chosen for this most notable service the opportunity to excel and to realize the meaning of pure love. But the fallen ones desired that they should no longer have this path of initiation under our own angelic bands, and therefore they cut off the aborning of the Christ child within them. This occurs here and there and everywhere, and you find that the problems of teenagers all over the world is the absence of the challenge for striving in the sense of producing a sacred labor where do we hear the term sacred labor outside of Summit University? Where do we hear the extolling of the virtue? Where are the youth taught that they can bring forth a work of the hands? And yet they themselves, so longing for it, have gone back to the so-called cottage industries and those things that were wrought by the hands of the early settlers that they might be in touch with their hearts and their souls and their innermost mind in contemplation of the Buddha. See how the handiwork then draws forth energies of God that are necessary for the evolution of the soul. And when souls are cut off from this interaction with their own inner being, then the rebellion sets in, then the ingratitude, then the demand for more and more freedom and money from the parents, then the getting into the drugs, too much time and space, and the absence of gurus in the midst thereof to teach them the way of self-perfectionment through love. Let us realize then that it takes time to hate, it takes time to gossip, it takes time to lose the energy of the sacred fire in dissolute living, and all of this time is the absence of the filling of hallowed space with the striving for excellence in one way or another according to the free will expression of the heart of the individuals. Therefore, you can sum up all of the perversions and the misuses of love as energy misspent because of the misuse of time. Time is opportunity to enter in to perfect love, to the glory of God. Let us train up the little children. Let us renew the path of initiation of our loved ones. And let us begin at the beginning, for perfect love is wrought by the work of one's hands. How well I remember this messenger's own plaintive plea to El Moria concerning the development of love within her own heart. And her plea was this, 
that she was so busy working the printing presses, getting out the pearls of wisdom, and seeing to the activity that she feared she did not have time to develop perfect love. It was then that El Moria instructed her that the very activity of service, when performed in harmony and love to the glory of God, was the development of perfect love. And therefore that love has manifested in the expanding activity, in the multiplication of the word. Think then on these things of how that love has become a line and a point that you could attach onto yourself as that book, as that poster, as that spoken word, as that friend on fire because of personal contact with the ascended masters through the tireless service of the messengers. Realize that all actions of perfect love wrought by the messengers and the avatars who have gone before have resulted in your being seated in this sanctuary, in your coming to Camelot in this hour. The contemplations, the inactions, the unfinished spirals, none of these have led to your discovery or acceleration on the path, but only deeds well done in perfect love. Therefore, in the hours when you sleep this night, you will have counseling from the most compassionate and wise ascended masters serving with beloved Kuthumi and Dwalku and El Moria. And you will receive instruction on your own life, momentums of procrastination and dalliant dalliance and incompleteness of perception as well as of precipitation. And therefore, beginning the new year, you have a new slate, a new page to write, a new karma to balance, and a new opportunity to finish those spirals that are pertinent to this age and to bring forth the one single spiral of the great white brotherhood that counts which is the victory of the publishing of the word and the establishment of the inner retreat. Therefore, let all energies vested in incompleted spirals, which are not to be completed, for the time is past, now according to the consent of your free will, be withdrawn, that thereby you might reinvest those energies in the common goals of our cause. Thus, we show you how, though past history has shown the sign of the zero of incompleteness in this age, it can be the fullness of your victory in the test of the ten. Upon the foundation of sacrifice, selflessness, surrender, and service, therefore, let us build the ruby pyramid the pyramid of the ruby ray. Let it rise within the seat of the soul chakra of each one as the supreme gift of self-givingness in this year. As you look now toward the past, the year and the decades gone before, know that this cycle marks a new beginning. The greatest mistake you could make would be to tarry any longer in lamentation concerning past failures. Let that which can be placed into the flame be placed into the flame by ruby ray angels. Let that which must be balanced as karma be greeted with joy as joyous opportunity. And let the new beginnings which can be begun because of past victories you have won begin in this hour as our joint and mutual dedication, our gift of appreciation to the Lord of the world, Gautama Buddha, who cometh, who cometh quietly into our hearts. 
May your understanding of perfect love, may your raising up of the ruby ray pyramid within your soul be for the healing of the absence of perfect love within the economy. May you take measure then of the levels of opposition to love manifest as perfect harmony in your feelings, in your mind, in your heart and soul and desire body and in the excellence of your perfect precipitation. Let harmony be the sign of the presence of love. Let harmony endure and let your own path of self-perfectionment toward the ascension be filled with this love, this love of striving all the days of thy life and recognize that the perversion of striving is strife. Internal strife, strife one with the other, and the strife among nations. Thus we see if people would put aside their arguments, their feuds, their differences, which are waxing hot in the Middle East, and concentrate on striving to draw down the perfection of the Christ consciousness, the engines of war would be consumed and the rivers of hell would dry up. We are Chamuel and Charity, ever striving to focalize within your heart that perfect love and to bring you into congruency with the souls erection of the ruby ray pyramid. Cherish this goal, for the starlight will pass through that pyramid and make you whole. With the sign of the ruby cross and the ruby ray angels, I am come, I am come, and I am Chamuel, charity, of the light. Rejoice, O people of God, for a light is arisen in thy midst. Truly it is the light of the Holy One of Israel. Truly the Lord hath anointed thee. Rejoice and be glad. Let the joy of God be upon thee for he hath established in thy midst the fount of light, the fount of forgiveness, and the violet transmuting flame. Surely is the gift, surely is the gift of the Holy Spirit for the removal of every transgression of the law. Why, people of light, you ought to be among all people the most joyous and the most gifted, the most grateful of all. For God has vouchsafed to you the secrets of the seventh ray, even the mystery of transmutation, whereby ye know that that which is placed in the flame of fire of the heart on this day need never appear again 
Therefore rejoice, for this indeed is more than the forgiveness of sin. It is the transmutation of karma. And therefore such a holy gift ought to be met with that wondrous joy that overflows the boundaries of the stream of identity as bubbling brooks inundating life going forth with a living proof that the God of Israel does keep his promises unto thee and that this is the fulfillment in the latter days of the vision of Daniel and of the hope of Isaiah and truly of the promise unto Isaiah and Jeremiah of the coming of the one, the coming of the God Emmanuel. Children of the light and sons and daughters of God, let your light shine, let your rejoicing be the promise that the Lord shall have them in derision. Those then who defile that sacred name, those then who are the heathen, let it be understood that these fallen ones who have sent the serious tones of their condemnation unto thee in this very week, they shall be brought low. For the Lord shall have them in derision, and vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay in this dark cycle of the Kali Yuga. I will return by the light of victory. I will return by the wisdom flame, the joy that is bounding, the joy that overflows from the very heart of Alpha and Omega in the great central sun. Roll them back into that native nothingness and let joy abound midst the keepers of the flame. For truly it is the hour of victory and mighty victories coming. And the joy of that victory is the joy of a mother's heart. And it is my own. For in the very hour of the sounding of their brass, and their tin in their eternal damnable din there is the presence of sweetest child and the bursting forth of the word even the coming revolution in higher consciousness going forth as the printed page as the word that is writ that can be read that can be known and that does indeed atone for every sin you who have come to deposit your sins, remember that I have told you. Remember that Moria has come to rejoice with you in this hour that the only sin that can be forgiven and permanently removed from your life stream is the one that you permanently surrender. Therefore, go not away from the altar in those moments of tender and tenderness to render unto thyself once again heaps of coals of condemnation. If you have not surrendered the condemnation of the sin, then where is self-forgiveness that descends from the mighty I Am Presence? Why ye ought to be of all people upon earth the happiest, the most deliberate, the most serious, the most loving, the most giving, and the most forgiving, for light has come to thee. Therefore we await thy forgiveness of thyself and of others. For some of you we have waited many a year, and we have had to recommend your going forth to forge a chart of victory in the disciplines of life because you failed to forgive yourself. As the beginning step on the path of Camelot, you wait upon the Lord and we wait upon the soul's perfect formation of the gift of love unto God. It is the gift 
of flowing forgiveness, of violet flame freedom and joy, of happiness, of transcendent, buoyant resilience that looks into the very teeth of error and declares, you have no power over me, for I am in Zadkiel's heart, and with a thrust and a roll and a ho, 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 I am here to start anew a victory spiral I once knew in the very heart of God when he thrust me forth to challenge those fallen ones. I am here, O oh God, in joy, and there is a fire in my eye, and there is a twinkle of sorts, for I know the mirth of Moria that is always needed on earth, and I can laugh them in derision as well. Those mockers of the word, they have no power over me, for I am a son of the Union, and the Union Jack. Yes, I am a son of the Union, and I will give my whack to those fallen ones by the power of flaming light. It is the all power of God. I roll them back, and I have my joy, and I play in the meadows of life, and I stamp my feet upon the demons with Shiva, and I shout Shiva into the night, and I bind those murderers of the word by the name of Sanat Kumara. He is my Lord, and I will have none other. Thus I am Moria, and I expose the Nephilim in Moscow and in Washington. I expose those interlopers. I draw my lines of force around Poland, and I give my heart to the people of light who have their devotion to the diamond heart of Mary. Mary, the mother of one, Mary, the mother of the union, Mary, the mother of Christ within you, speak the word into her heart. Open the door and speak the word unto the heart of Mary. Let my people go. Thus the word is spoken. Thus the word is heard. And the power of the Archia Mary before the throne of God and before the nations of the earth is supreme. And I tell you, the giving of that rosary is strength and it is victory and it is the sacrifice that we require. The will of God is good. It is boundless. It is joyous. It leaps from heart to heart. And whatever you have been before, I implore, now see yourself in the image of the living Christ. Beloved ones, the fallen ones are very long-faced, and they are very serious about your sins, and they will count them one by one until they must go through many fingers and toes in order to make the long, long list of your sins of all past ages. Well, beloved hearts, I would gladly wear the banners of your sins all inscribed on tiny flags all over my temple until I should become a yogi of flaming waving flags across the sky. Beloved ones, if it would serve the purpose, and it does, I would have them pin the tail upon this donkey, for I require that donkey, and the Lord require the donkey, and thus if it is a donkey that is required, I will serve for blessed hearts these fallen ones. They have their counsels and they have their determination, but hearts of light, the flame of the living God dwells in you. What more can you ask? What more can you receive when you have not fully received this most precious gift of love? God's own valentine to you, year by year and day by day. I am Moria in the heart of the joy of the violet flame. I am Moria in the heart of the will of God. I stand for every son of God who has been slain in battle by treachery and intrigue, by assassination or war, or war or the murderous intent. I stand by the flame of the living word, I stand by the sword and I say, let the laughter of God and the laughter of sons and daughters ring. Let it ring across the face of the earth 
and let these fallen ones know they have had their day, their day is done, and the children of the sun are on the march. Oh, beloved hearts, take seriously the teacher and the teaching, but let go of this sin and sense of sin and recognize how these fallen ones would leave you in a shroud of condemnation unto your very death, the death of the soul itself, the death of spontaneity and the leaping into the air as you wheel that sword with care and thrust it with a hoe into the very nadir of the cause and core of evil on this planetary body. Why the demons tremble when I speak? Because they know I tear the veil, I expose, I pierce through, I will have you for my own and I call to you to rejoice this day in the violet flame for our beloved hearts. There is no place for brittleness in this activity. There is no place for schism. When you have the violet flame, you have the panacea. You have the universal solvent and you have the fountain of youth. Thus, alchemists and those on the quest of life have sought these three, and all are given unto thee. Blessed hearts, I know of some across the face of the earth who know not of the violet flame, but if they knew it, and you will see to it, they would do better with it than you do. Blessed hearts, let us not leave it to this conclusion. Let us rather affirm that we who are the first fruits shall make abundant use of the violet flame in joy, in laughter, and in spreading abroad in the community the good news of the everlasting gospel of the violet flame of transmutation. And therefore, let the violet flame pierce the veil. Let arrows from the heart of Saint Germain that cosmic Cupid now be sent to the hearts of those who are waiting, waiting for the alchemist, waiting for the violet flame. Violet flame hearts the world around. I address you. My love abounds and I make you a promise in the name of my chelas of the will of God at Camelot that they will deliver you in this year, 1981, that valentine box, that gift of the violet flame. Let it be thrust, let it be hurled by the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Let it be thrust by the ingenuity of your heart because you have devised a new way to teach and preach the word. Let it come because you dare to invoke and accept the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, precious hearts, no sin so ancient is so intense that it cannot be removed by the violet flame, the immensity of the mind of God. Let us leap for joy. Let us welcome the beginning of the celebration of Easter tide, and let us enter into the Lenten season in this hour and in this year with a full understanding of the meaning of sacrifice to be empty that we might be filled. I come with a blessed joy. Now let us see how you will prove this week that you are a chila of El Moria, worthy of the name, and a devotee of the violet flame, an alchemist in the laboratory of the soul and heart that knows how to use the gift of life, how to bring forth the light of heaven for healing, for resurrection, for the sheer joy of living, hearts of light. Why do you tarry in this fight? Let us deal the final blow to error. Let truth appear. Let us see mighty conquerors here, lest Moria fear that he must look elsewhere for responsive hearts to the cord of Camelot. Indeed, indeed, I plight my troth with the chilas of my heart across the face of the earth. I will not let you smart against the acid and the acrimony of the fallen ones. Their word is turned upon them as their own judgment. Let your word of neglect 
of the vilest flame not count against you and let that sin be forgiven too for I place my life upon the altar as I once placed my own son upon the altar of God for truly I come in the name of Sanat Kumara truly I come in the name of Abraham and I come to remind you of who you are and whence you have come your noble descent your lineage out of the heart of the cosmic virgin O oh, blue flame mother of the universe, O oh, blue flame mother of lights, let these stars appearing know the inner strength of God in them. Let that strength be unleashed. Let it be as the power of Hercules. Let there be the mighty sacred fire go forth and let us see what stalwart sons and daughters of light will prove in Moria's name, in Saint Germain's name, to America, to her people, to the press, to the politicians, to the power elite, and to all those who stand with the intent to defeat my little ones. Clear the way for the children of the light, I say, cheer, cheer and clear the way for the incoming souls of light let angels cheer them on let mothers of light and fathers receive them let teachers be prepared and let there be the ennobling of hearts as a true celebration of valentine's day be therefore ennobled be therefore ennobled by the messengers of the great white brotherhood ascended and unascended by all who have gone before be ennobled because God lives in thee. I stand in the courts of kings and presidents. I stand in the homes of the humble. I infuse with light and I am a preacher of righteousness preaching the good news of our God who is ever one. His will is good for thee. Drink ye the cup and rejoice. Rejoice, people of God. Rejoice, I say, and be grateful for the gift. Oh, the gift of the violet flame.